Lately, my work is alternately abstract and representational. I continue to experiment, trying to develop new ideas and extend old ones. I'm mainly concerned with color and form. My use of strong, sometimes dissonant colors, the random use of lines and shapes, form an abrupt personal symbolism. Though it is very spontaneous, there is also a certain element of control. What I feel a balance between the emotional and intellectual aspects of making art. I try to achieve something that satisfies me both visually and subjectively. We moved all of the works in of which I believe there's about 106, so it was quite a few, stacked around, a little bit daunting. You know, I knew that we were gonna do salon style. In other words, you know, works stacked. I just sort of started by sorting them out by uh, style, because there's works here that uh, represent the late 40s. I think there's a nice piece that I believe is the earliest date, is 1947. Some of the later ones go up to 1980. Mr. Kane had, you know, explored a lot of different styles through those years. In preparation for this show, when I was going through the vast amount of work out there, there were actually some things I never had seen or don't remember seeing. I found this one this kind of small canvas that had some damage in the corner. Maybe a few days later, I found a black ink uh, drawing with the same composition. And I thought, well, this would be really nice if he had done a larger painting of it. Again, a couple of days later, I was looking at the studio and some of the larger paintings there, and some of them I guess I hadn't seen because I pulled out one and it was exactly that same composition. It was like a gift. I'm standing right by, by some of my favorites, the Corpus Christi scene, the waterfront, the sailing aspect on the bay, the transportation system throughout the city. Mr. Keane made a, made a nice study of that as well. I think really charming and beautiful uh, compositions of the city. When I was uh, growing up in the summertime, sometimes I would go to work with my mother and sometimes I'd go to work with my father. I do remember being in his art classes and just drawing and painting along with the students. And uh, that's uh, where I got my first cat because the students had found a cat outside and brought it inside to play with and during class and I got to adopt it. She was a little tabby. And I remember chasing her around the art studio. He let me bring it home. I think without telling my mother though, because when she came home and saw the cat, she was saying, what's going on here? <laughs> and then at our house, we had uh, classes in our art studio on Saturdays during the school year and during the summer months. And so my mother worked really hard to organize those classes and call the students and set everything up. The classes themselves were a lot of fun. My father always played a lot of uh, music and Farrah Fawcett, who lived not too far from here, came over and she took art. You know, I would walk around sometimes and look and see what other people were doing, and I, I started talking to her about her art and what she was drawing, and she was just like really, really nice. 
He was the art critic for the Caller Times newspaper. The years were 1955 to 1974. And he would uh, go look at these local shows. And I, sometimes if it was um, in the summer, I'd go with him to review the shows at the art museum or other places around town. And he would uh, critique them and then write, up, write his column for the newspaper. Sometimes he would share with me his observations or maybe I didn't really see what was so great about a certain painting, he would explain to me something that he saw that was good about it. And I think a lot of people saw that too and they, they really appreciated you know, his comments. I think, I think he did encourage a lot of the local artists to, um, to keep producing. He went off to college at Middle Tennessee State I think majoring in English and uh, had was about a junior or something like that and then he decided to become a Marine, enlist in the Marines in World War II. After that went to uh, the Korean conflict as well and in that particular conflict he was serving as head of a combat art team. They would go to Korea and draw and paint pictures of that experience group of, of the Korean War works here. He led a, uh, a group of marine artists. And we have some examples from of that time. I really think that uh, it's a nice connection to the military community here in Corpus Christi. The show is a strong show and it's a variety of his works from landscapes to um, still lifes to people ranging from the 1940s up to 1980. From the beginning until the end he was very active artistically speaking. Art isn't a commodity. It must mean something to the human race. The fact that one has to be surrounded by and be able to experience art is fundamental. <laughs>